Why in the world are interest rates still so low? In light of inflation, in light of seeing what prices are doing, why in the world are lenders still willing to accept interest rates, which mean they are getting a loss of purchasing power as a return on their money? Negative real returns. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly why interest rates are still so low. Ready? Let's dive in. All right, if you're not aware, my Portfolio Allocation Mastery course is currently available for pre-order. The price has already gone up, but if you pre-order now, you'll still get it at a discount compared to the price it'll be at once it's launched. Link and promo code are in the description below. All right, take a look with me here at this chart because this is going to start to explain. It's going to start this rabbit trail of where we're going. This is the Treasury General account. This is the amount of money that is in the federal government's checking account. Whenever they borrow money or get money in from taxes, it's going to go into this account. And then whenever they spend money on anything like military contractors and politicians, paychecks and Medicare and Social Security, it is going to come out of this account. Maybe not Social Security, but anything that they spend there, it's going to come out of this account. So we see here that the end of 2021, this account got down to a really low amount. Right now it's higher and before that it was really high and it's never been that high before. So brief background on what went on with their checking account, why they had so much money and so little money. Right at the beginning of 2020, they borrowed a ton of money, $3 trillion and spent a bunch of it at first and about one and a half trillion came flooding in here as they were saying, hey, we need to spend this on something. And then when Biden got elected, Yellen said that they were going to spend down what was in this account instead of borrowing more. So they spent it down and her original plan was to take it here right around the $400 billion mark to get it back to the about the same level where it was at before. Now, the reason why it got spent down so far from there is because of the debt ceiling debates that you remember were going on at that time. They were trying to raise the debt ceiling. They had run out of the ability to borrow. And so they were saying, hey, we can't borrow right now. So they were spending everything that was in their checking account there, drawing down on their savings if you will, even though it's our money, it's not theirs. So they drew it down and then they realized they figured out the solution to borrow again. And so they were able to build this account back up and now it got really high there in May. So what happened in May? If we look at their total federal tax receipts, this is all the money that they make from taxes. They had a bonkers month there in April, massive record amount of money that they brought in from taxes. Look at that. This is why governments like inflation because it pushes prices up and when prices go up, they make more from tax taxes, even without having to change the tax rates. Look at all of these prior tax month spikes, nowhere near what it was at for 2022, just absolutely bonkers. What this did to their deficit and surplus was it actually pushed them into a surplus, massive surplus here. So much so that if we switch this over from monthly to quarterly, we can see here that it caused them in quarter two of 2022 to have a surplus. That's something that hasn't happened in a very, very long time. And so what's going on here? Because a lot of people have been pointing fingers at different administrations and different sides of the aisle. And you like to spend money. No, you like to spend money. What's going on here is political gridlock. So the federal government has not been able to spend nearly as much money as many people were thinking they were going to spend. That has driven them to start to bring in a lot more money then they're spending, causing them to have a surplus. What did this do? Well, it led them to cut the auction sizes for the coming quarter for their treasuries. Basically, what this means is they're saying we're going to borrow less money because we're making more money from our taxes than compared to our expenses than we thought. This means that we're not going to have to borrow as much to make up the difference. So what does this do to the total supply of treasuries out there? Well, this means that the treasury supply out there is not having an impact where the prices are falling as much as you would think they should. Because what else is going on right now? Federal Reserve is selling assets off of their balance sheet. 
they are letting their balance sheet trickle down. And so treasuries are entering the open market here, or at least they're not having the same amount of buying from the Fed that they were back throughout this whole time. So you've got the Fed, which was historically a very big buyer of treasuries. They stopped buying treasuries. You would think that that would cause the price of treasuries to start to fall. We know that interest rates and prices of bonds are inversely correlated. And so that would push the interest rates higher. However, as we see here, the federal government is borrowing less. That means they're issuing less treasuries into the market. So the federal government is creating less treasuries. That's allowing some room for the Federal Reserve to sell some treasuries and not have as much of an impact on interest rates. Now, if we look at the current interest rates of the 30 year, you know, just under three percent here, you might still think, well, that's preposterous. Who in their right mind is holding a 30 year treasury getting paid 3% when inflation is at 9% right now? And most of that is financial institutions. This is banks. So why in the world are banks not just dumping treasuries? Well, it's because they can't. Banks have requirements on the assets that they're required to hold versus the amount of liabilities that they have. For a bank, a cash deposit is actually a liability because they owe you that cash. So when the federal government spends money from this account, the Treasury General account, this is money that goes from outside of the banking system because this is a separate account held at the Federal Reserve. So this is money outside the banking system that when they spend it, it goes into somebody else's bank account. It goes to a politician's bank account. It goes to a military contractor's bank account. It goes to a healthcare company's bank account. So every time the government spends money, those are new dollars entering the banking system. Those are cash deposits, which for a bank, that's a liability. What they have to do legally is turn around and go buy an asset to offset that liability. What are the assets that they have to buy? They have to buy treasuries. They have to put the money in the reverse repo facility. They have to go get collateral to hold. This is what's keeping interest rates down and why financial institutions aren't just liquidating because they can't. They would have too much cash, too many liabilities on their balance sheet. This is keeping interest rates down. So these dynamics could reverse themselves at any time and we could see the treasury start to issue more more debt again, start to borrow a lot more. They could reduce their spending if something crazy happens and, you know, we enter a dream unicorn land and they actually balance their budget by reducing their spending, cutting spending and start to make some moves in the right direction. Well, that would reduce the liquidity of cash in the system, reduce the requirement for banks to hold so much collateral on their balance sheets, and it would allow interest rates to return to more of a free market equilibrium. However, in that case, case, you would also have deflationary forces on the economy because less money circulating throughout the economy, more money being sucked out of circulation from a government's balanced budget. And then that would put downward pressures on inflation, which would mean that there's no longer anything wrong with a 3% yield on a 30 year bond if inflation was expected to be somewhere around 2% or 1% during most of those 30 years. And that is really the final piece of this is expectations about what inflation will be in the future because this is a 30 year treasury. This is a 30 year bond where the interest rate is 3%. The 20 year is a little over 3%. The 10 year is 2.7 and the two year is 3%. So what the bond market is telling us is that whoever owns these is expecting that the inflation during that time will be low enough because right now inflation is 9%, but that's from a year ago to today. So that's not the number from today for a year into the future. So when we look at these interest rates of you know 3% on a 30 year treasury, that's somebody whoever's buying that is saying, I think inflation is going to come down between now and then to the point where I will still have a positive yield on my money, even if the first year is 9%, maybe the next year is 8% inflation, the year after that is 5%. But then for the majority of those 30 years, it's going to be 1% or 2%. That's what the market is pricing in here is much lower inflation in the future. Do I think that's accurate? Well, it all depends on monetary policy and what the Federal Reserve decides to do when the economy can no longer handle their current tightening. That is a topic for another video. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.